We move back into the pre-start. Dial up over its full reverse. The match has shifted from the Aussies to the Kiwis. At the set, the match belongs to Sestet. Gilmore stuck to Lured. Hanson puts his bow down. And can Gilmore turn on the heat? Welcome to Long Beach, California, where 12 of the top match racing teams in the world on these boats to send upon the Long Beach Yacht Club for a week-long match racing marathon. At stake is their share of over $75,000 in cash prizes, and the winner takes home the famed Crimson Blazer. Hi, I'm Tucker Thompson, and this is the 52nd Annual Congressional Cup, the second stop on the Global World Match Racing Tour. With the starting line set just off of the Belmont Pier, we move into flight one, match number one. It is Scott Dixon representing the Long Beach Yacht Club in his 17th Congressional Cup. He'll sail against Denmark's Nikolai Seisted, sailing in his first. No dial-up, Seisted went over the top of Dixon and both boats have now jived back towards the pier. By the pier for you, just getting underway. Here's Dickinson. On the chair right here, Camille, watching the great events unfold in the box Dixon down at the pin, then he tacked for clear air, so early advantage goes to the young Dane. To add insult to injury, a right hand shift has Sehested crossing Dixon. Approaching the top mark, it's more of the same, and Dixon will. Head to the right for clear air. At the set, the match belongs to Sestead, and Dixon now gives chase three lengths behind. And into the finish, Sestead takes his first point. And into the last match in flight one, it's actually one of the closest. Bjorn Hansen trails Sam Gilmore by about a length and a half. Hansen tries to get on his breeze downwind. And so we move into flight two, match number two. It's New Zealand versus Australia as Phil Robertson faces Keith Swinton. Of the teams coming up with us on the pier, two teams will always be with us. This one is... Uh... And we move into the dial-up as both boats head to win, come to a stop. Less than a minute to go, Robertson sets up for the right-hand side. And there's the gun, a relatively even start. Phil Robertson just bow forward. Finally, Swinton squeezes Robertson off. He'll tack away. When they meet again, Swinton makes it stick, just getting across Robertson's bow from the left. Halfway down the run, Robertson drives and Swinton lets him go. Swinton finally jibes, Robertson double jibes down to get on his breeze. The Kiwis are making a move. Swinton luffs. Robertson responds, keeping well clear. We're about six boat lengths outside the lured gates, and Robertson looks to break the overlap. And we have from New Zealand, one of the great all time, brought his team to the Olympics, an Olympic sailor himself, Ralph Robertson. And he's done it into the lured gates. The match has shifted from the Aussies 
to the Kiwis. We move back into the pre-start this time. Australia's Sam Gilmore in his first Congressional Cup will face Sally Barco, the first all-female tour card holder on the circuit. Dial up over its full reverse for both boats. Gilmore spins on to port to get away, and Barco will just settle in behind. Nice move. Gilmore goes into the pier close as he can. Barkow, meanwhile, sets up to the right. Both boats head to win. Both Hetzels down. Three seconds to go. Barco in trouble. Could get shut out here. Jib's going back up. Protest flags. And it's a yellow flag. Gilmore cops the penalty, but Barco misses the start. And it's a red flag penalty. Gilmore goes right into his turn, and Barco takes the lead. And just behind, Phil Robertson wraps up his match over Keith Swinton. Both boats split, and when they meet at the top of the track, it is Barco who crosses ahead. Now the question is, can Gilmore turn on the heat downwind? Dive for dive, Barco tries to stay ahead, but Gilmore is reeling her in. Into the lure gates. Gilmore has set up on starboard. Can Barco get across on port? In the zone. She's flagging. Two flags. Somebody's likely to get a penalty. Umpire's in position and they haven't made a call. It's a complicated one. Barco tries to get her kite down and round all at the same time. Blue flag. Barco cops the penalty. Two boats meet again. Gilmore is on starboard. Barco on port. Will she get across? Will she tack tight in front to Lured? She squeezes up into attack. It's close, but she's got it. Gilmore now luffs up to stay to windward. This is the moment of truth for Barco. Can she lull Gilmore into an offsetting penalty and then pull forward into the race? Or will Gilmore maintain control? Right now they've luffed up head to win and tack on to starboard the port rather gilmore stuck to leward sally in control but when they tack for the zone it's gilmore who's going to be inside advantage the aussies In the end, a well-earned win goes to Gilmore. And our final match, it's a split tack start with Chris Steele off to the right and Taylor Canfield to the left. Upwind, Steele draws first blood from the right.
Back on the starting line, Eric Monin from Switzerland will face Bjorn Hansen from Sweden. With both boats in reverse, Hansen will try to back up faster than Monin and get behind him. They're no longer head to win. Now Hansen will look for his moment to spin around to the left. Must have been contact there. Yellow flag. Monin gets the first penalty. Final minute, Hansen will set up to lure to Monin to the line. At the gun, it's a split. Monin off to the boat, heads right. Hansen at the pin will go left. Back on the line, this time it's to the finish, and it's going to go to Scott Dixon over the six-time world champion, Ian Williams, and the local crowd goes wild. The giant killer right there. And Chris Steele upset the defending Con Cup champion, Taylor Canfield. At the gun, it's a split tag start with Hansen to the left, Monin to the right. Monin now heads to the finish, but he's haunted by that yellow flag penalty. He's got about four and a half lengths. Is that going to be enough to spin at the finish? Monin approaches the pin end of the finish line. The kite's coming down, the jib is up. Remember, the head of that spinnaker has to be all the way down below the gooseneck, and it is. Before they go up, head to win, he'll spin. And then put his bow down. Hansen comes in from behind. Hansen is close. Monin puts his bow down. Hansen puts his bow down. Who has won it? And the match goes to Bjorn Hansen. Into the pre-start of the next match, two teams who have sailed many years against each other. Bjorn Hansen from Sweden faces Ian Williams, six-time world champion from Great Britain, no dial-up, and we're on fourth. Close between the two teams off the pier, and it's Hansen who cops a penalty. Hansen takes Williams up over the line before dipping down himself, so he'll win the start. But remember, he's still got to shed that penalty. And finally, Eric Monin will face Johnny Bernson, and the breeze has shifted so far left and gotten light that Bernson will comfortably get across. At the lured mark, Williams goes into it. Hansen is still in charge of the match, but he has a penalty to turn. Bjorn Hansen leads Ian Williams into the finish, but he's got to shed that penalty first. The kite is down. They're rounding up into the pin. Williams is in the background, and I think Hansen is definitely comfortable to take the race. The bow coming down. And Williams is dealt another crushing blow. So our coverage of day number one of the Congressional Cup started with a bang and ended with a fizzle. The race committee stayed out waiting for Breeze, which finally did fill in in a big way towards the end of the day. And early reports are for light air and even rain throughout the rest of the week here in Long Beach. But for these competitors, it's not about the conditions, it's all about the competition. As the 52nd Annual Congressional Cup continues tomorrow. I'm Tucker Thompson. We'll see you then. We move back into the pre-start dial-up over. It's full reverse. The match has shifted from the Aussies to the Kiwis. At the set, the match belongs to Sestet. Gilmore stuck to Lured. Hansen puts his bow down. Can Gilmore turn on the heat? 